Survivor Tree is published by Little Brown and it is illustrated by Caldecott Honor winning um, illustrator Aaron Becker. A tree stood steel straight and proud at the foot of the towers that filled its sky. It grew mostly unnoticed, silently marking the seasons. In winter time, the tree's bare bones stretched tall, reaching for the freezing white blue above. Come spring, white flowers blossomed, piles of petals scattered as people rushed by. Glossy green leaves announced the arrival of summer, casting polka dotted shade on the sidewalk. In fall, the tree blazed red with a million hearts before each for, before each took off in an elegant dance. Winter, spring, summer, fall, bare, white, green, red. Winter, spring, summer, fall. One September day, the perfect blue sky exploded. Under the blackened remains, the tree lay crushed and burned. Workers dug through the wreckage and discovered unexpected green. The tree was taken far from the smoldering landscape to fresh soil where its shattered stump encountered a different sky. Two stone blocks were placed in its sunken shadow, a memorial of makeshift towers in a makeshift home. No longer stretching tall, the tree reached deep in the warm earth, and all was quiet. Winter passed, the tree was bare. Spring arrived without flowers, but with a flutter of, flutter of speckled wings. Then one day, buds to blossoms, blossoms to leaves, though charred and gnarled, the tree began to grow. And so it went for almost 10 years. White, green, red, bare, spring, summer, fall, winter. It was time to go home. The tree hesitated to fill the empty sky. People no longer rushed by. Instead, they stopped and wept beside two forever filling pools. And they noticed the tree. Fingers traced the timelines, warm palms pressed the old wound, the bark joining the past to the present. Today the tree rises steel straight and proud beside the footprints of the towers that once filled its sky, silently marking the seasons, blazing with a million red hearts in the fall, our survivor tree. Thank you. I'm really, really honored to be here this morning along with my fellow authors um, to share with you Rue the Great Race. There came a time when flowers could no longer be found. When the city started to grow, the power people collected all the remaining flowers. And kept them for themselves. Rue's grandmother remembered a day when it was different. Grandma talked about flowers, but her voice
voice changed whenever she recalled their sweet smell. Each year, the powder people shared a single plant with the whole city, and everyone waited for it to bloom. And when it did, they announced the date of the great race. All the children were invited to run, but only the fastest to reach the flower would get to keep it. This year, I will enter the race, thought Rue, and I know I will win. So here's Rue practicing really, really hard. Rue thought of nothing else day and night but winning that race. And the look on Grandma's face when she surprised her with the flower. At last, it was the big day. Ready, set, go! my lips 
were noises with no meaning, only, I could not complain like other teenagers, only grunt like a horse. My tongue stuck out of my mouth, my palms slapped my hips, and my knees swayed apart together, apart together in those pink, ridiculous knee socks. Mom planted a silk flower in my hair, the cherry on top of a dog poop sundae. You think if I look cute, people will forgive my weird behavior? My knees sway apart together, apart together. Probability low. My whole life I had lived with this brain-body disconnect. The thinkers, the people with fancy initials after their names, had examined, poked, analyzed me a million times. After all the tests, I'm labeled like a strange species of toad they have discovered. Most people see me only as that label, not as a real person. If they stuck a name tag on my shirt, it would say, hello, my name is Autism. My official diagnosis, low-functioning autistic. Nothing like setting high expectations. Some people call me special. Is that supposed to make me feel good? And do not get me started on the R word. I mean, think of a really disgusting food. For me, that's oatmeal. Hello, a lukewarm cereal that looks like barf? Even if mom stirs in chopped apples and walnuts, then it's just chunky barf. Anyhow, that R word, every time I hear it, tastes like oatmeal to my ears. I wish people could see inside my head. It's amazing in here. First of all, my memory is infinite. Scenes from my past play back like a high-def IMAX film with surround sound. I can hear a melody once and remember it forever. This can be irritating too, like when that tubby trash bag commercial gets stuck on repeat in my brain. Na 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 icky yucky stinky mess. Na 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 tubby trash bags are the best. Everything I read, my mind archives in color-coded folder, folders tucked into alphabetized filing cabinets. That's how I imagine it anyway. Since forever, Mom gave me books to keep my hands busy. My favorite book, the one I still take everywhere, is The Amazing Kids Animal Encyclopedia. People think I like looking at the glossy pictures. They do not realize I have memorized all the animal facts. All of them, a total of 327. My mind flashes back to these facts like a prayer, especially when I get jittery nervous. Numbers too. My mind sucks them in like thirsty paper towels mop up my spilled oatmeal. Mom doesn't get why my oatmeal bowl keeps falling on the floor. Na 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 na, icky yucky stinky mess. I can keep track of how much money our grocery cart will hold with each item mom puts in. I want to scream when she weighs the organic steel cut oatmeal from the bulk bin. Do not buy $6.49 of that barf. You can get a whole pack of gummy worms for that price. Could I solve a Rubik's Cube in less than 30 seconds? In my head, probability high. Getting my hands to cooperate in making all the turns, probability zero. So I'll start stop there. Uh, as you can see, Charity is funny, she's smart, she's sassy, she's a typical teenager, right? So I hope that you uh, get the book and continue reading and hear about all her adventures and the new friends she's going to make.